Aaron here is my college roommate, and he's been in a couple of my past videos. He originated with a fear of flying, but ever since he started flying with me, his fear has subsided to more of an apprehension about the sensations felt in the airplane. This is precisely why I'm easing him into the world of flying one step at a time, and I let him get a little stick time whenever we're flying so he can get more comfortable with how the airplane flies. By letting him take the controls, it helps him understand why we feel the little movements that we do while we're flying the airplane, and it kind of helps relieve that apprehension a little bit. On another note, you may notice at the beginning of the video that there was some liquid coming out of the bottom of the fuselage after I started the engine. I saw this in the footage when I got home, and I immediately went back to the airport to check it out because, needless to say, I thought it was a fuel leak. I was scared that the fuel selector underneath the cockpit floor had busted a seal and was spewing fuel all over the place, so I tore up the carpet and opened up some inspection plates in search of a fuel leak down there. If there in fact was a fuel leak, I wanted to find it as soon as I possibly could so I could go ahead and tell my dad so he doesn't go out to the airport and fly the airplane not knowing that there's a big fuel leak. Nothing was wet around the fuel selector or any of the fuel lines, but I did find some standing water near the back of the cabin underneath the floor due to rain, so I was happy to eliminate the possibility of an expensive fuel leak and declare it to be water. This is one huge advantage of running mounted cameras during the flight. They may not do any good during the flight itself, but it will sure help you catch mistakes you made or defects with the airplane during the flight. I would have never known there was liquid coming out of the airplane without the footage from that tail cam. Other than that, this was a pretty routine sightseeing flight that ended with an approach and some touch and goes at the San Marcos airport, which will be covered in a later video. So all that being said, sit back, relax, and enjoy this flight around Canyon Lake in South Central Texas. San Marcos Airport Information, Lima, observation time 2250 Zulu. 1150 one, with 3, visibility 10, sky is clear. Temperature 262.04, altimeter 3012. Visual approach and use landing and departing runway 13 or runway 8. On initial contact, advise you have information, Lima. San Marcos Ground, Skyhawk 80991. Check 1 2. Ground 80991, Cessna 172 at the Hail Sheds. Information Lima, we'd like to taxi out for a west departure going towards Canyon Lake. Cessna 991, runway 13, taxi via Bravo, Charlie, and Juliet, cross runway 8. Bravo, Charlie, and Juliet, cross runway 8 to runway 138991. Okay. How would you know when he says a specific runway and it's like a new airport? You don't have like one of those? It says some random airport? Uh, so the runway number is always the heading that that runway is pointed towards. Okay, you know the, the heading numbers? So north is 360. Okay. East is 090, south is 180, and then west is 270. So this is runway 13. So runway 13, you basically take the last number off the degrees. So it's, it's a three digit degree. You take the last number off, so it's 130 degrees. It's pointed at 130. So it's runway 13. And give us a call on 119.0. So that's automatically good. It gives you an idea of about where you need to go on the airport, but um, I believe commercial pilots are required to have the airport diagram with them. Or a airport diagram with them. I could be wrong on that, though. It's always a very good thing to have. That. What? I think that's a paramotor. I've been seeing them just like that buzz is, around. That's a paramotor. Pretty cool. I want to point my nose into the wind. Different difference between this engine and uh, you know, like a regular. Uh, Car engine, car engine's liquid cooled. It's cooled by antifreeze. This airplane or this this engine, pretty much any airplane, you're gonna have an air cooled engine. So while I'm sitting here on the ground, the engine's not rocketing through the air, so it doesn't really have a way to cool itself off. So I just want to point it into the wind. So right now, I'm getting as much air into the cowling as I possibly can, so I don't overheat it while I'm running it up. I'll do my pre-taxi checklist real quick, even though we already taxied. The avionics are on. Recording devices are marked. I already did that. ADS is checked. Ground control is contacted. Safe taxi is accessible. Seat belts are fast and nav lights are on. We don't really need it at night. We'll probably take off with nav lights, so it's starting to get dark. And we'll, we already tested the brakes. Okay. I'll set the brakes here. Before takeoff, cabin doors and windows closed and latched. I'll go ahead and shut my window for the run-up. Flight controls are free and correct. That one goes 
up, that one goes down, that one goes up, and that one goes down. Elevators up, down, rudder left, and rudder right. All of those are good, and I'm going to check that I have full range of freedom. Okay. Flight instruments check and set. Alright, airspeed is at zero. Attitude indicator is neutral. It's a little bit off to the side, but that'll kind of straighten out when we rev, rev up the engine. Altimeter is set to the barometric pressure. Turn coordinator is neutral. Compass. Or the gyro, rather. It's off a little bit. Align it with the compass there. And then vertical speed is neutral. Okay. Fuel selector valve is on both. Mixture goes to rich. Parking brake is set. And the throttle goes up to 1700 RPM. That attitude indicator kind of straightened out there with the high RPM. Check the left magneto. That's a clean drop back to both. Looking for no more than like 50 RPM drop. Go to the right magneto. That was more like 100, but that's just what this magneto does. And back to both. And I'll check the carb heat. There's a small smooth drop and a viewer recommended to me that I just roll the engine back to idle while the carb heat is pulled and make sure that it still runs. And it's still running. Okay. Engines in the green, oil temp and oil pressure are. Plenty of fuel suction is good and the ammeter is responsive with the landing light. Okay. Well, let's check. Throttle friction lock is adjusted how I want it. The flaps are up. Emergency procedures are reviewed. So when we take off, we have runway eight off to our right. We got a big ramp. We got another runway off the end of our nose. Then we've got fields all around us. If we had to put it down, departure plans. We're gonna. He's gonna clear us for a left turn. I bet you he's gonna clear us for a right turn out. That'll be more on course. And the takeoff checklist. We know that. Radio set. Power contacted. Release the parking brake. And just kind of glancing into the sky here. See if I see any airplanes. And I know about the guy that's over there somewhere. He may be behind that hill. Okay. San Marcos Tower, Skyhawk 80991, holding short of runway 13, ready for departure. San Marcus Tower, runway 13, clear for takeoff. Proceed on course. Clear for takeoff, we'll proceed on course for 80991, and just for your information, we'll probably make a right turn out. That works, thank you. Okay. Transponder to altitude, strobe lights on, carb heat cold, mixture rich, flaps are up. Fuel selector is on both, trim is set for takeoff. I'll get my heels down to the floor when we roll onto the runway, and I'll align my gyro. And since it's getting dark, I'll go ahead and flip on my landing light and my nav lights. Okay, lined up at the runway. Check the gyro, we're good. Heels down the floor, full power. Roll it in slowly. Or right, full power. Airspeed's alive, 50 knots. 55 knots and 60 knots. Tap the brakes to get the main wheels to stop spinning there. Oh yeah, it's smooth. Oh, the joys of flying in the evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much going to take us right over Texas State. We'll make our next turn. Alright, we'll take 2,000 feet when we get out to the lake. We're almost there. Almost to our altitude, I mean. San Marcos Tower, 80991. 
going so Marcus. That tower, we're going to be uh, circling Canyon Lake out here. Is that 127.1 uh, for San Antonio approach? Uh, 128.05 at low altitude. If they don't answer on that one, you can try 127.1. Okay, one two eight point zero five or eight zero nine. I know. I'll talk to you in it. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Okay. San Antonio approach. Skyhawk November eight zero nine nine one. They may not be able to pick me up. Those are pretty low. Actually, let's go up to twenty five hundred. We've got a few towers in the area out there. I want to stay well above them. San Antonio approach 80991, Cessna 172, just off San Marcos Airport. We are due westbound, about five miles away from the airport. We're just going to be circling Canyon Lake, uh, 2500. I'd like to be on with you. Skyhawk 80991, Squawk, uh, stand by, Squawk, it would be uh, 7340 ident. Okay, 7340 and ident for 80991. I'm right, Leo Mike, reset transponder, squawk 4665. America 2418, turn left right to Gabby, fly plane around. Our 8099 or 1, your radar contact, about 10, make it 8 miles west southwest of San Marcos. Maintain VFR over Canyon Lake. Roger, 991. PS 782 Heavy, contact San Antonio approach on 120 point, pressure okay. 125. So we can maintain VFR over the lake. We'll need to tell him if we ever deviate from that, just so he knows where we are. But yeah, this is Canyon Lake. Looking at my obstacles, it looks like we are clear of all of them in the area. They're starting to come up on the altitude. So we, are, you, so we want to stay around 2,500. Let's not go any lower than 2,500. So we can stay, you know, 25, 26, somewhere in there. Okay. Number 991, uh, additional VFR traffic just popped up to uh, about mile and a half west of your position, altitude indicating 3,100 and verified type on them. Okay, we're looking for that traffic, 991. And that traffic for 991, do you uh, know which direction it's heading? Here's be maneuvering. Roger. I don't know if he said that already. Okay, let's go ahead and make a right turn here. I don't want to get too close to that traffic wherever he is. So we can stop the bank angle there, yeah. What? That was good, that was good. You can uh, keep banking. Uh, but, you know, don't let that angle get too steep. 
when we're this low, and I mean, we're, we're going at a pretty good speed, 90, 95 knots. Okay, you can level out here. By this way a little bit. Appears to be maneuvering now west south westbound and climbing no faster. Roger, thanks, 9 That's really cool. You can see all the shadows of the hills out there. You can see downtown Austin way out there. Let's see how far away that is. About 39 miles away. Crazy how just getting a little height you can see so much further. Oh yeah. You can see a long ways. Alright, let's go ahead and make a right turn here. We'll roll it around 90 degrees and keep it about 20 degrees on the bank. So you want to put that yellow arrow on that bulb. Wait a second. I'm sorry, that first white line. If you put it on the bold white line, that's 45 degrees. And that's what we call a standard rate turn. And to keep the turn coordinated, you add a little bit of right rudder. I can see it better because I'm at a better angle, but you add a little bit of right rudder. Flying is a beautiful addition to my daily life, and it's a privilege to be able to share it with so many awesome people and show them what flying is like, both in the cockpit and through my videos. With every flight, there's always something that can be learned from it, whether it be big or small. So I hope something caught your eye during this video and helped you learn something. In the next video, I'll be doing pattern work at San Marcos after we finish circling the lake, so stay tuned for that one. If you like these videos, you can click subscribe to be notified whenever a new video comes out every Monday. I'm also hosting a Patreon campaign, which greatly helps cover the development and production costs of producing these weekly videos. So if you like the videos and you'd like to help out, you can click on the Patreon logo or click the Patreon link in the description, and even donating $1 or $2 per video is a big help. So until next time, have fun and fly safe. Thank you for watching.